her so one thing that i've had to learn is how to deal with her sadness okay like when you have a partner your partner's always going to be sad right yes nobody's always happy but some some kinds of sad uh, sometimes you can really understand another person's sadness and sometimes you really can't okay yeah if you have like the same kind of saturn then you'll understand the other person's sad, uh, sadness but if you have a different kind of Saturn or something weird is going on with the Saturns, like it's happening here, you just can't understand like, why is this person not happy or how do they, how are they expressing their sadness? Um, so I have to be real careful about understanding uh, in a very practical way, like uh, how she's, ex why she said not getting so caught up in it, not getting so worried about it, just letting it be and just being helpful towards it, not getting sucked into it. Okay, which you think should be terrible, but she's feeling, oh, no, that's fine. I mean, it's not a big problem. Opposite, the other way around, actually. Okay. Yeah, but that's also very hard. As an astrologer, I've noticed that it's really hard. It's not, it's, it's not hard to get your predictions correct, but it's actually, a lot of times, they'll be exactly wrong. Okay. <laughs> the predictions will, can be exactly wrong, but that's not uh, too much of an alarm flag because you're you know that you're on the right topic but you just Only the direction is different yeah so um yeah so in this one I, the way it actually works out with my wife and myself is she what, what was it that you said it was no i said that uh as you said if the saturn thing is not matching here so then it can happen yeah. that something is bogging you too much but then the other person is oh it's okay i mean what's a big deal let it be yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. But now uh -huh. who's going to feel which way to who? It's complicated. And actually, when you get into a relationship, the who feels which way to who is very fuzzy because it goes, it makes circuits in relationships. Uh -huh. So like you feel that, you know, it actually starts to just, it always goes both ways. Okay. But you could see something very good about the relationship and the Jupiter's. You know, yeah, regarding this only I wanted to ask, like uh, many times I get people who are from like some traditional families. Traditional doesn't mean that male, female thing, but more they have more spiritual goals. Like yeah. they want to follow more the Griha Stashram, not the, as Bhagavatam says, the Griha Medi part, only like only in, indulging in materialistic affairs. They, they have more spiritual goals also. So in those areas, uh, my eye goes to this thing, like, uh, it's this 84 <laughs> percent so in that yeah. like for for in those cases like i get many women also who tell me that oh i want a husband who is spiritual or something like that so do you think in those lines this part is more important yeah this would be a great marriage for someone like that like uh -huh. a woman that, that wanted their husband to be able to teach them coach them guide them Mm. and especially this is to the ascendant so it would be like in a very practical way like just help them with life in a practical way mm -hmm. okay? with with wisdom then this would be great this would that's another thing too like what does the person really want out of their marriage yes exactly you would focus on a different aspect of the compatibility to see if they really get it if somebody really wants a great sex life then you got to really concentrate on the venus stuff but if somebody really wants to like spiritual growth with their marriage yes. then how right then you want to concentrate more on jupiter even even though jupiter is not traditionally a part of it yeah so in this one question which always bogs me i want to ask you so suppose somebody is born in one year only both the people and suppose both of them have jupiter in taurus or libra which is not a very great sign for jupiter I mean, ignoring the rest of the chart, I'm saying. So then now the, they have the Jupiter in the same sign for both. But then the placements are not good inherently. So then uh, what do you suggest on those lines? It's okay. This is the thing. That, what I was trying to say before about how it's not arithmetic. Like it's not one minus two equals one. Mm -hmm. it, this is a good, a good way to explain what I meant there. there. With astrology, if you have two symbols that say the same thing okay the output the outcome the interpretation is positive it doesn't matter even if individually the two things that they're saying are negative two negatives make a positive like in math like in okay. uh, what is it called multiplication mm -hmm. um i think so so you 
like for example if if i have a jupiter that has a particular like affliction okay and my wife has the same affliction to her jupiter okay then that helps us get along oh, okay because we have the same we're experiencing life the same way we can okay. relate to each other really well but if you okay. if i have a certain affliction in my jupiter and my wife has something totally different uh-huh. then it's going to become a point where we just can't you know get together okay okay yeah so in th- this area only i thought of so suppose a woman has jupiter in libra yes and then according to this as you said it is also okay to have for the male also in libra but suppose that jupiter uh, for the male is in cancer so then you are saying instead of having it a positive effect it can things can yeah. go difficult right but that's very simplified so just okay. that's a simplified theory but now don't forget that you want to think about your degrees not just your whole sign oh okay <clears throat> so actually like if you if you're born with jupiter at 1 degree libra and I'm born with jupiter at 29 degrees libra it practically makes no effect oh okay you know but if and then also if you're born with jupiter whatever the jupiter thing is there's that's only one part of the the picture really for a relationship the moon is the most important thing okay and the moon in the ascendant the ascendant is like is this really practically going to work in a practical way and the moon is how much are the people going to put their minds together oh ha ha so do, do the other you, one okay sorry. okay yeah i mean the ascendant will say the habits more prominently that's what you mean yeah the, okay yeah so is this helpful yes fantastic this is <laughs> yeah so then like now you do the same kind of thing with the moon oh okay so now you you get a base score for the moon and you modify it by all kinds of things and you, you get this thing and then you put all four of them together okay like this okay and then you wind up with the score overall So this score overall is just like your basic pulse on how how good or bad it is but you go down and look at the details some of the things in there are great some of the things in there are really hard Okay then on top of that you want to look at the traditional way of looking at things which is with the nakshatras Oh okay yeah my wife my wife nakshatra is revati my one of my favorites Okay and mine is rohini Okay So they're kind of cool but look at that there's temperament the what is this one called I think it's ba it's off completely okay zero out of eight points but we have good things you know your base your base score is what 13.5 out of 36 a traditional astrologer would have said don't get married okay but oh, we've been married okay. for 21 years oh it's yeah okay on those lines it is quite less <laughs> yeah but because we don't need to be like look at the individual charts too we don't need to be traditional mhm i have a lot of jupiter and rahu i have okay. jupiter and libra and i have a lot of rahu in my chart and a lot of jupiter in my chart she has lots of rahu we don't have to be traditional about the things okay and then of course there's a kuja dosha which is a consideration too Yeah, yeah regarding have, this I wanted to ask you uh, how how do you uh, how much weight or what do you think on this like because most of the people I see their charts they are mangliks because if, if you take mars in 12th first second fourth seventh eighth then i mean half yeah. of the public literally right 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 so what's the bit the fundamental thing about the mars Mars problem, right? That would be a good little translation of Kuja Dosh. The yes. Mars problem. The fundamental thing is, well, Mars is the bachelor. Oh, Mars is a Mars is an unmarried, independent, free man, adventurous oh. free man. Oh, okay. So, to put Mars in contact with the seventh house or the second house, okay, represents a clash of your symbols because the seventh house is about partnerships. The second house is about partnerships and Mars is not the partnership former Mars is the soloist. Oh. So what you get what could the Mars problem or Kuja dosh is talking about how independence interferes with partnerships. Okay. If you get two people that are very very independent they'll be able to make a good partnership. Oh. That's why it, that's why the classic remedy for a Kuja dosh chart is to marry a person with Kuja dosh. 
Okay. Right? Okay. So if you get two people who have the same kind of feeling, like I, I like a lot of space in my relationships. I don't want somebody right on my back. You know, maybe I could get married and see my wife once a week or something. Oh. You know, we live in different houses, but we love each other. Or whatever, we have totally different schedules and we're both dedicated to our careers, but we have a great marriage. We have so much fun whenever we're together. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a positive Kuja Dosha where both of the people have this strong influence of Mars and independence. But they're the, they got together. So they understand each other and they, they, nothing seems weird to the other one. The real problem with Kuja Dosha comes where one person has it and the other person doesn't. Oh, okay. So that's going to mean one person doesn't really relate to like making you a part of me and me a part of you and everything is shared. But the yeah. one partner is like that. It's like, what do you mean? I want my separate space. But the other partner is like, why do you want your separate space? Don't you love me? Okay. Because, so, you know, that's where it's a clash. So if you have one person with a, with a lot of connection between Mars and the seventh house, okay. especially, and the other person with a very little connection between Mars and the seventh house, it, it's one of these extra things that you have to consider on top of all this other stuff. Even if there's a great compatibility, this is going to be an issue. Oh, that the person is not going to, one person is going to feel like the other person is not partnering. They're, they're maintaining their independence. They're maintaining their separate bank account and whatever. They're maintaining okay. their separate life from me. <laughs> bank account. Also. You know, like I've, I've seen a lot of couples that they have like separate bank accounts, like the husband and the wife have separate bank accounts and the wife yeah. doesn't know what's in the husband. The husband doesn't know what's in the wife. Hmm. But sometimes they, they're, they're like, yeah, why is that weird? That's totally normal. Okay. Because they both have strong Mars. So they both feel totally comfortable like living like that. So they have a compatible relationship because they're both independent. But where one is thinking, why is my husband hiding his money from, you know, one doesn't have that sense of Mars. Okay. And the other one does. The husband is saying, why does she want to know what's in my bank account? And the other one is thinking, why is he hiding? And that's where it doesn't work. Okay. So like in my, in our case, I have a 36, what, what I am, the way I um, quantize it is I have 36% of influence from Mars on my seventh house factors mm -hmm. and she has 40. Oh, so we're pretty much, oh, pretty much exactly the same. So that's mm -hmm. why it comes out to a very high score in terms of how well we are on this Mars issue. But if I had zero and she had 100, then we would have zero Mars compatibility. It would be really, really bad. Okay. So to get quanti to quantify the Kuja Dosha thing is a, is a um, formula that I've developed to quantify it, to be able to put it into numbers. It's based on oh. you want to do the Sputa Drishti, the degree specific, like... Uh, just the basic thing that you learn first is if Mars is in such and such houses, right? So yes. the reasons is if Mars is in such and such house, then there's Kuja Dosha. It's because then Mars can influence the seventh or maybe the second. Yes, yes. Either by being there or by aspecting it. So then don't you, that's just a shorthand description of it. Now actually calculate the aspect. And calculate the, okay. how much of an aspect is there from Mars to this, to this seventh okay. house. Okay. How, and the seventh Lord and to Venus. Average those mm -hmm. things all together and you'll get a number that tells you how much Kuja Dosha there is. Oh. Not just whether you have it or not, but how much of it is there. Okay, okay. And then you can compare it with how much another person has. Okay, so in these lines, I wanted to ask you, like, um, there are many people <clears throat> who say that among the positions of Manglik, that the position of Mars in 12th house is considered a very, very difficult one because the 8th aspect falls to the 7th house. Right. Twelfth house also deals with psychological things and sleep and all those things. So twelfth house Mars. So do you, I mean, suppose this uh, effect you are taking. So this is like for any placement of Mars, you take this effect. Look, for example, Mars from fourth aspects the seventh with some forty percent aspect, or, or do you give weightage to that if it is in a particular house, then the aspect is more prominent. Do you see that like that? Mars from fourth aspect seventh, one hundred percent, isn't it? One hundred percent. What I'm saying is, uh, do you see yeah. like this 
effect of aspects do you see it the same way from every house the fourth aspect seventh aspect and the eighth aspect yeah or... okay i understand your question i think uh-huh. so one one part of your question was you're bringing up that people say the 12th house from mars is pretty significant the reason for that is mars has this special specialty mars has got like this big sword that he's carrying <laughs> he, he slices this big area of space with his drishti uh, other planets just have this like spear they just poke at it, an area of space okay. but mars has got this like slash effect so he can slash everything from 180 degrees the seventh house all the way to 210 degrees the eighth house he slashes 100 percent influence on that whole zone okay so when you get it when you get mars in the 12th house you don't even even if you don't know degrees like in the old days you, you're born and somebody draws it on a piece of paper for you and gives it to your mom gives, and your mom keeps it for 12 years and then mm-hmm. start to look at it when you're like 13 right like in the old old days when you're 13 you start to think about marriage yeah and you you take out this piece of paper that you got when you were born and there's no degrees written in it or anything but you know that you know that mars in the 12th is probably got a hundred percent aspect in the seventh because that's the that zone that mars slashes fully Okay. Yeah. So, if you if you do know degrees and you can calculate sputta drishti with the actual degrees, then you don't need to worry about well Mars is in the twelfth. Just actually calculate the amount of the effect. Okay. And then about four seven and all that stuff. Most planets, every planet will aspect at seventh house to one hundred percent, fourth and eighth to seventy five, mm-hmm. but Mars improves the fourth and eighth aspect to one hundred percent. Oh, okay. That's why it gets that whole slash from seven to eight. So Mars aspect to the fourth is a hundred percent. Okay. So that's why Mars in the fourth house. Mm-hmm. Not only is it hitting the fourth house, which also has to do with partnership and family. Yeah. But it's also getting the seventh by its aspect, probably. But with the fourth house, the if it moves out of alignment, it goes towards the third. The third house is everybody gets twenty five percent only. Yes. 25% view to the um, aspect to the third house. So if it's exactly in a 90 degree alignment, it's 100%. But if it moves less than 90 degrees, it quickly becomes not so prominent. Okay. So the fourth house is not always so notorious because even um, in many cases where Mars is technically in the fourth to the seventh, the aspect might not be very strong because of the actual angle between the seventh house cusp and the actual placement of Mars. Okay, so another thing I wanted to ask you, uh, specifically for Mars, because this I was planning to ask you. <laughs> okay. Uh, suppose uh, Mars is not in any way in, uh, associated with the seventh house, for example. Suppose it is in tenth house or in sixth house, for example. But in tenth house, it obtains directional strength. And suppose the ascendant is in Leo and the Mars is exalted in the sixth house. So in that case, in one area, it is having a very prominent position in the Kendra, in the Digbal, and in other ways it is exalted, but it is not affecting the seventh house. So what, what have you seen on those lines? I mean, I have personally seen that that has more impact in the marriage and relationships, even if it is not associating with the seventh house. Uh, well, what I would say is when you, if you don't get Mars um, influencing the seventh house, then you don't have a problem with Mars. Okay. This particular problem, the problem of how independence clashes with partnerships. If you have Mars exalted in the sixth house, then you get a real strong person. Okay. The, yeah, what the, I meant to say was like, uh, that may not affect the relationship, but because it is very prominent or very strong, sign-wise or house-wise, then that nature will obviously be there in the person and that will be there in every sphere of life. So will that also not affect relationships? Yeah, that's reasonable. That's yeah. reasonable. That's the kind of thing that you can't really quantify and put into formula. But yeah. you should do it when you look at a chart and see. Like another thing that I do when I'm just when I'm looking at people's charts is I'll check the most prominent planet. Oh. You know how you were saying um, the Graham, it, it, if the planets are, if the ascendant lords are friendly? Yes. What I would say is even more important is if you can calculate the most prominent planet in the chart and then see oh. if they're friendly to each other. Ah. Yeah. So if the person, or just see what's the nature of this person by their most prominent planet. This guy has got a really prominent Mars. 
Mm-hmm. And this other person doesn't. They have a very prominent Venus. Oh. So they have a very different way of going about things. Maybe because if one is a male and one is a female, it might work. Okay. Um, yeah, but now another thing can be an issue. Like here's this person with Mars that's not Mangalik. Okay. It's in the 10th house. It's in the 6th house. Got Make it, sure it. they don't marry a person who is Mangalik. Okay. As far as the Mongol Doge thing goes, you know, it, just saying, it. taking that out of context. Okay, so then you are saying they don't need to, I mean, go ahead uh, with a Manglik. Yeah, they shouldn't. Okay, okay. And one last thing I wanted to ask is, uh, they say that uh, if you have uh, benefits in the chart in a particular place, and if when you superimpose the chart of the partner, there's a malefic which comes and sits over there. So then uh, it is not very uh, conducive. I mean, you can feel that that aspect you are lacking once you meet that person. So for example, yeah. if above your moon, somebody Saturn comes. Yeah. So what is your opinion on those lines? Yeah, yeah. That was in my my report too. Okay. Yeah. If you have, like I've seen... I've seen cases where one one partner Saturn is sitting right on top of the other part, partner's moon. It's just yes. That person causes the other person a lot of grief. Oh. It, it, it doesn't. It's not very good for a, a relationship because it brings a lot of sadness to the other person. Oh. Okay. K two can do the same thing. K two can really make a person feel disconnected. Okay. Yeah. So keep your eye out also for just individual con- conjunctions between the things like what we first looked at when we just looked at the way that my chart was going on with my wife's chart. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So this, it's really complicated, isn't it? Yeah. And suppose there's like Jupiter above sun or sun above Jupiter, then that will strengthen the purpose and that that'll give a, benefit, really that'll give a benefic- uh, beneficial effect. Okay, and in this you only take uh, into consideration the natural benefits and natural malefics. You don't go into the yoga thing like for Saturn and Mars. I wouldn't do that because what's a yoga? You know, it's your eighth lord and it's not my eighth lord. <laughs> okay. You know, but but astrology is something to research. I mean, it's not just a. It's not something that's been perfected. Even if it's been perfected, it's been lost. The perfection yes, of it is yes, yes, yes. So there's things that are we should research. That's an interesting topic to research. But research is difficult because if you're not a master and nobody is, then yeah. it's very difficult to do research properly. Yeah. So it's very good to just st- try to stay as simple as possible and not try to invent new things because we're not really at the stage where we can re- even research effectively. It's like kindergartners trying to cure cancer. The way that we try to do our astrological research, it's so unscientific and and stuff. But th- that does sound like an interesting thing to put on a in a scientific docket and uh, research. What about the house lords? What about if one partner's eighth lord is conjoining one of my planets? Does that make a negative effect? Or should I consider it to be my lord? Like if, if your Jupiter is conjoining my moon, but... Jupiter is my eighth lord. Ah, okay. Maybe that's different than if your Jupiter is conjoining my moon and Jupiter is my ninth lord. Okay. It's something okay. to think of. So it's real complicated. So basically, yeah. it goes back to, first of all, do you like each other? First check that out, you know? Yeah, and I have personally noticed, I mean, even with friends or seniors or juniors or equals, or whoever you call them as, I have seen that wherever I have benefits in the chart, the moment they have another benefit there, it goes like bang off. Yeah. And sometimes it happens that you like somebody very much, but the other person doesn't like you. Right. That can happen because, I mean, in their chart, there's one benefit where one of your malefics is going and sitting. Yeah. Then I have seen that even if I like them because their benefits is over my benefits, but if it is the other way around, then they may not like me very much. Yeah. Yeah. And one small thing I want to ask you, like uh, you said regarding this Mars, that you know, if both are having the equal percentage, it is like quite uh, beneficial. Yeah. So on those lines, I wanted to ask you, like uh, sometimes we see charts that, for example, there's a chart of a man who is 
very much focused and out there in working and getting things in the outer world. And the woman is there, which is totally feminine chart. Now, the, the too many benefits are there in the fourth fourth house, for example. So the woman prefers to stay in home and some. So on those lines, what do you think? I mean, that's like a good polarity, should, or that becomes it should awkward. work, right? It should work well. It should work well under the following conditions. Like the first condition is if the very masculine chart belongs to the man and the very feminine chart belongs to the woman, then it probably is beneficial. Mm -hmm. Second condition is if the culture supports it. Okay. It's very, it's, then it's really beneficial. This would be like a Mahabhagya Yoga. You know the Mahabhagya Yoga? Oh, the sun, moon, ascendant, and or then. For the gender, right? Oh, okay. it's, it's related to the gender. Okay. So if I, if I have all female sun, moon, and ascendant signs, but I'm a male, yeah. I don't get a Mahabhagya Yoga. Okay. Right? But if I'm a male and I have all male ones, then I get Mahabhagya Yoga. So it's the same thing. You have to think about the gender of the person and the cultural setting of the person to okay. see some of these things. Yeah. Amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, this is a big topic, right? I'm glad oh. that we got to talk about it. It's just We're just opening up the Pandora's box, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, that many people I think talk this, about. the most important thing I have seen in my experience is what the person uh, is looking within a relationship. Uh, if the person is looking for love and romance more, then then we have to check Venus. If the uh, the spirituality aspect is more, then even if other things are great, Jupiter is more important. This is I have seen time and again. I mean, yeah. know, sometimes I see people are totally different, but. In one area, they have the same angle and they are staying together. <laughs> yeah. And the thing that I've um, seen a lot too is don't forget that compatibility is not the whole not the whole assessment of a relationship. There's two individuals involved. Yeah. So I've found like, go and help the people individually. Like the one partner will have a certain problem. You've got to look at their chart and help them deal with that problem. You, like look at this relationship things that are indicated from their individual chart and then go look at the partners and help that person individually and then use the compatibility chart for how they go together. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because this is the part we always try to project and reflect our problems on the other person. So some, most of the times it is our insecurities only which we project on the other partner. It is not a problem of compatibility. Yeah. As that's what I always say to people who are going to have a love marriage or who are into a relationship. So sometimes they will ask me and maybe to you also, oh, things are not going that great. Do you think we will stay together? No? Can you check the palms of both of us and say that will, you, will we be having a relationship later or not? I mean, lifelong. So then I tell them that. See, the very fact that you have got into a relationship or you are planning to get married also, that itself is a very big factor that you are quite compatible enough. So I don't think you have to go to an astrologer to ask that, uh, will we stay together or not? Okay. But mm. uh, if that question is coming, that is because of some of your own weaknesses, which is there, or maybe your goals are different as they say, even if your compatibility is good. So that has to be sorted out yourself you can uh, an astrologer cannot help you much on those lines because you are already compatible otherwise it can't happen that oh you are loving each other and you are planning to get married now so that yeah. can't happen so yeah, that's really good i like that advice yeah i've also found that too that sometimes i get people that are doing the matchmaking thing yeah and so like i'll Sometimes I'll get like a batch of like 10 compatibility report requests from the same person. So sometimes you'll see like really low scores in those because the person has no idea who they're checking with. But okay. for the most part, you never, for the most part, you very rarely see a really low score because okay. the person wouldn't even be concerned enough to check a compatibility reading if they didn't already know that there's pretty good compatibility because they, they already feel interested in the person. Yes. yes. If you so meet like you the said, first time and there's really little compat. There's not that much for a marriage. Actually for a marriage, the more information you have, the better. Okay. Actually. So like it's, it's good to get a compatibility reading, but I don't think people should use a compatibility reading to say, should we get married or not? Okay. You should use your own judgment for that.
Yes, and for things like uh, will the marriage work or not in the long run, the, I, I think more than compatibility, I mean, that ov- obviously has the weightage. It is more important to see like things related, like the sun, for example. Because that will show that are you, is, is both the per- partners, na, they are willing to cross through the challenges and go and na, that certain thing persevere na, and sun yeah. stick to something. So if those things are only not there in the chart. Even if you have thousand percent compatibility, yeah. it, it will never work. You cannot stay with anybody, in fact. Yeah. So those things are also very important, I think. Or you've seen, uh, I've know, I've seen couples or know of couples that are infidel. They're not faithful to each other, but they stay together. Oh. So there's like a high compatibility that's keeping them glued together, but their individual charts have low stay, you know, low sun power, low staying power. Oh. <laughs> There's so many interesting possible com- combinations and permutations. Yes, because I have seen so many charts. I mean, they are not having much computer, but they have a very strong that you know, sense of commitment. So if that is there, they, they, then they are like the okay, whatever is there in the karma, let us take it because there is no use of yeah. swapping the partner because the karma will stay the same. Right. Anyways, thank you very okay. much. Thank, thank you so much. So much. It has been I look a forward very, to seeing you again. A very enlightening session. Thank you very much. I hope. Thank you. And whoever wants a consultation from you, they can always go to your website and the link, I will pin it in the description. So we'll be back again to speak on something else.